with EcoYouth, um, we're focusing a lot on education. We thought we didn't have too much in terms of what we're actually doing right now with the solidarity economy. So we were coming here today to do a lot of learning. Um, and so we weren't really prepared to do the full presentation because we want to kind of hear from other people and get ideas. And, and um, just to back up the beginning of the story, this all this all started this idea of getting a bus. With you know, we go around, we do workshops. Uh, we have all these you know great people involved here, um, and we do workshops in the community. And um, you know, traveling, getting around is always a hard thing, especially when you're a large group of people. So we're like, well, we need to get a bus. You know, we need to find something. So we're looking for things to get donated, and we got this vehicle. And you know, in terms of dependency on the capitalist economy, you know, what's this thing burn? Well, it burns diesel. Um, and so here we are doing like workshops and stuff around environmental issues and things that are good, but we've got this thing that's burning diesel, and so that's a problem. Um, so that's the reason why we're trying to change it up, and we're looking at, you know, more about what's the impact of the existing economy rather than how are we building. So I think we fit more in under kind of like the resisting and reforming, and education is being a key kind of part of that. Um, so we do a lot of kind of learning within it, and we're just starting up EcoYouth again this fall, so this is kind of what's, what's coming coming up with the next, the next crew here, is learning about what, is, what does diesel do? It's kind of, you know, as we have this bus, let's use it as a kind of kaleidoscope to see how all these different issues connect. So where did diesel come from? It's oil, it's part of the fossil fuel economy. Um, you know, and the impacts of burning it, you know, we've been focusing on asthma so far, so the local kind of health impacts, but there's also the big picture impacts of climate change and global warming, um, and all the environmental impacts, as well as the social justice impacts along the way of the communities where the oil gets extracted from, the communities where it gets processed in, the communities where it gets burned, and you see a lot of damages all along the way. So, um, you know, asthma is when we focused on with this workshop, and we're building another one now to really look at diesel, biodiesel, and, and biodiesel is one of those, in terms of um, the speaker from Brazil who was, was talking this morning about those, those traps. Um, so I think biodiesel is one of those things that is, um, the same word gets used and has been co-opted in a lot of ways. So there's a huge difference between the kind of locally produced biodiesel that groups like Empower are making, or in Rhode Island we have a group like Newport Biodiesel and um, other ones that collect and collect oil, waste oil from um, restaurants and re recycle and take those materials that are wasted in the other economy and put them back into more of a solidarity economy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really positive thing, and that's called biodiesel, and they treat it, and then you can use it in a diesel car, and that's great. But that same word is used for corporate biodiesel, um, you know, which comes from huge plantations in places like Colombia or Indonesia, and where there's you know massacres of people like literally being driven off their land at gunpoint in order to you know create land to grow so-called green plantations. And they say this is the green economy, you know, because it's it's growing, it's green, but it's a plantation, and the plantation economy goes way way back, you know, since the foundation of where this thing came from was you know slavery and colonialism and displacement off of land and all of that. And so the same word gets used for both, and that, that's an issue. So we're trying to like, learn about that, go more in depth into that, and really define the difference. And I think looking at it from the model of you know, capitalist economy versus solidarity economy is a good way of doing that. Um, and then the other thing we're trying to do, um, well, I'm going to turn this thing off because I can't find the picture I'm looking for. It's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, one of the things that we're trying to do is figure out how to run this bus, not just as a cool project that we can do for ourselves and we can do workshops right on it and get around and come to conferences like this and present the things, but we want to be able to run it as a co-op. We want to be able to share it and have it be a community resource. And we're looking for ideas of how to do that and how to start it and have gotten into lots of you know stickiness with you know insurance and DMV and you can't do this and you can't do that. And so you know, we're kind of doing it, you know, I guess it's like the underground economy right now where we are renting off the bus, we're just not allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so anytime we do, we have to tell people, well, you know, our insurance doesn't let us do it and we can't charge you this much to go from point A to point B or for this many number of passengers, but our suggested donation would be in this range and if you can do that, then we can share it and ask for a donation to a nonprofit. Um, so that's kind of where we're at now, but we're looking for ways to, you know, actually form a co-op and, and how to do that in Rhode Island. Um, and have this be one of the services that we could offer the community and share and uh, you know use for education as well. So that's kind of where we're at, and uh, um, we're here to do a lot of learning. Can you <laughs> say a little bit about the Community Environmental College? Sure. Uh, yeah. But, um, you all there as participants? Or? Want me to stay from the beginning? Sure. Because like, it started like four years ago, and it was only one class, and Amelia was the only teacher, and it was like, 
15, maybe 20 kids. And now last year it was like two classes, four teachers, three classes. Six teachers? It just grew well, basically. We had it was like a lot of the eight. What, what, what do we do in that class? Tell them, tell them about that. Uh, All right, so I taught, um, last this summer I taught the environmental justice class with um, my co-teacher, Sunday. And basically we just talked, we talked about like, we just talked about everything. We talked about like what we're talking about now, how like it's not equal and um, racism, we talked about that. We talked about um, a little bit about uh, food justice too, because it all plays a part together and how like it's not fair, how the corner store is like really far away. And I mean, uh, Whole Foods is like really far away and the corner store is right there and they don't have the right food. And then what did we teach? It was, well, there was, um, Another class, like so, the three different classes each focused on like something different. Like one was food justice, one was environmental justice, and one was um, revolution one hundred and one, which is the class that I taught. Um, but it's basically students, um, high school students, from thirteen to we had like eighteen, um, and so they each go into these classes, and so. It's just showing them what like what does food justice mean and showing them what environmental justice means. But in the revolution class, I co-taught with Julian um, and Misty and Gina. Um, we talked each week. We took them through this. Um, each week we taught them a different ism. So over like first off, we started with like overall oppression, what it is, and um, like how to identify it and how to like see it. And so each week we covered a smaller like side of it, like racism, and then like um, sexism, and then um, hetero, hetero, I don't know, what hetero, hetero, like how, how would that, heterosexism. yeah, heterosexism, there you go. Um, and so each week, as like, you see, we like brought them to like a new place of it, um, racism was one of them, and then we taught them, um, we had like guest speakers come in too, and like we went on trips, and it's basically like what we do during the fall, like during school year, except they don't have school, and like we do more stuff because we had them for longer, like it's from like, it was like 10 to, 10 to 5, five. But, but like seeing, seeing the way they responded to like the stuff that we were showing them, and like I was learning myself too, because there's so much I don't know. Um, that I'm in the class and I'm learning myself and I know how they're feeling even though I'm a teacher in the class I'm still like wow like a hot moment um, It was so cool just seeing the response that they had to like the stuff that we were showing them and like the stuff And how like each person took it with something totally different based on like their identity or how they like um, See themselves. It was like something that's like really cool Yeah, that's the overall kind of picture of it. It's a eight-week long summer program um, and it, uh, it's definitely grown a lot over the years, and um, it's kind of a, a good opportunity and training ground to, you know, break down a lot about all these different issues and apply them and see how they, you know, affect looking at the environment in the context of everything else going on. So the environment, well, yes, it's, you know, trees and birds and water and things like that. It's also the neighborhoods that we live in, and we use the bus and we, you know, do toxic tours and drive around and see the difference of how, you know, how segregated things are and how environmental racism plays into the quality of the air and how many trees there are in different neighborhoods and things like that, how it plays into what foods are available in, in the stores around them, um, you know, the race and class of people who just tend to be walking around in the streets and really kind of see it. Um, and we, you know, go on a lot of field trips, we have a lot of fun, uh, and then there's also all kinds of leadership training opportunities within the program itself. So people who are students one year um, can apply and be teaching assistants the following year. Um, and then um, Jesus and Chris are both were teaching assistants the previous year and then came back as full teachers um, to teach the curriculum and they had more than students in the year after that. Um, and so it's also a good opportunity to learn, you know, some public speaking skills. Um, all the students at the end have a final project, we have a big graduation event with like 200 people at it. Um, and students, you know, created their own presentations on really like wide ranging topics, everything from, there was one on fair trade, uh, there was another one on classism and the Keystone XL pipeline. There's, yeah, one on balloon mapping where we made our own um, like DIY weather balloon mapping where we put a camera taking pictures and sent it up into the sky taking repeated pictures and then can knit those pictures together to build our own maps of the community. Uh, we made our own thermal flashlights where you can you know, register temperature with an LED sensor that you make yourself and then use that to put together pictures of where hot and cold spaces in a room are and then use 
that to apply around weatherization and home energy efficiency work. Um, there's another project on you know racism and stereotypes and breaking down a lot of the forms of those. Um, and you know students got up there and presented you know these presentations in front of 200 people. Um, for I think for a lot of people it was yeah real hard. And we had a lot of fun at the same time. So it's a good opportunity to really kind of dive into these issues in a in a real way. Yeah, turn it over and then we can have, I think, at the end, we just get in a circle. Do we have any questions? Absolutely. Right. So, do you have any questions at the end? Sure. All right. Well, since there's only a few of us, why don't we just sort of like go around, I guess? Yeah, I mean, you guys, we. we